In our third episode, we'll start with setting up the boundary wire correctly so that our Salino Minimo knows where its work area is. The mower shouldn't fall into a pond or run off or something and should always find its way back to its station. And it does that with the help of two different systems. The boundary wire and the guide wire. In this episode, let's start with the boundary wire. The boundary wire serves to delineate the mowing area. As soon as the mower comes near the wire, it gets a signal from it, turns around and continues in a different direction. But before we can really get started with laying it, this is very important. The guide and boundary wires have to be connected at some place at the other end of the garden, as far from the charging station as possible. It is important to define this spot in advance because we have to plan a 10 centimeter loop there in the boundary wire. For me, it would be this spot. Okay, now let's get the boundary wire. We start by the charging station. When the charging station is outside of the lawn, for example, in a bed or on a terrace, care must be taken to maintain a gap of 30 centimeter to the right and left of the charging station, measured from the center of the charging station. In this case, we also have more space and can lay the boundary wire non the right side directly along the mulched bed. Now comes the gap along the edge of the lawn. Near solid walls, leave 35 centimeters so that the mower doesn't hit anything when turning. For beds and gravel paths, 30 centimeters is enough. It shouldn't be any less because otherwise the mower could get stuck. With the ruler, it is really easy to maintain the right gap. It's also important that the bed or gravel path is level or only slightly lower than the surface to be mowed, so that the precision blades don't get damaged. For paths or pavers and so forth, 10 centimeters are sufficient. In that case, the mower runs over the path and cuts the grass right up to the edge of the lawn. The lawn or mowing edge defines the end of the lawn. For a stylish lawn edge, our motorized friend needs at least 16 centimeters in front of a solid obstacle in order to create an elegant finish. For example, here. If there is no solid obstacle, the lawn edging stones can be narrower. If there is a path or pavers in the lawn, the robot can simply drive over them. There should be a gap of 25 centimeters around a pond and it should also be secured with a 15 centimeter barrier. Pound in the mountain hooks every 100 centimeters, then pull the wire flat. Also fix the wire in place at any uneven spots. The wire has to lay absolutely flat on the ground everywhere so that the mower doesn't damage anything when driving over it. Speaking of driving over things, you can define how far the mowing robot can drive over the boundary wire using the menu item crossing distance in the settings. We'll talk about that more in another episode. You can also bury the wire underground. That way the grass will grow quickly to cover it. Also, fence off individual obstacles. When laying the wire around the obstacle, don't pound the hook quite all the way down. You can use the same hook to fix the wire on the way back. Oh yes, when coming around the obstacle, always start with the side that the wire comes from. That is important so that the wire doesn't cross over itself. That must never happen since it may cause faults later. Use the same hook on the way back. The beginning and end of the circle should be as close to one another as possible. The signals of the wire then cancel each other out so that the mower can drive across the wire at this point. The mower can recognize a lot of things without fencing. If it runs into an obstacle, it just turns. And like I said, be sure not to forget one thing in the spot where you've planned to connect the boundary wire to the guide wire. Lay a 10 centimeter loop. Once you've made it back to the charging station, leave about 50 centimeters of wire to connect it. 